everybody, Josh RV Nerd of Bish's RV, and one of Jayco's most popular couples fifth wheels just got even better. The what was previously Eagle HT 28.5 RSTS still called the 28.5 RSTS, but it has graduated. It is now a full Eagle, no longer the HT. It's a big bird, not a little bird. And along with that, there's been a couple little tweaks. One of the things that's really cool, but it's like almost easy to miss, is that it now has a, a, a windshield over that north-south bed, and Eagle has done very, very few windshields ever in its history. Really, only the 320 travel trailer is the only one I can think of. And it really opens that room up right there. And I, I'm kind of liking it. Like, this is a floor blend that was always kind of borderline for me. And, like, it's this year, it really kind of won me over. And it could be also with the tweaks that they've made, not just to the exterior, like the windshield, but the interior decor. It's now just, like, one decor to rule them all Lord of the Rings style. Um, they used to have two different things. They kind of merged and blended them together, but they really softened and cleaned it up. It's sharp. It's defined. It looks good. And they took their already really awesome dining table and chairs and cranked it up to 11 because you now have a little bit of what I call the Franken dinette where you've got that floating storage bench and two chairs, and that's fine. But most manufacturers stop right there. Eagle, doing Eagle things, added the two extra fold-away chairs, and then you can float that bench out of the way, or you could just use two chairs, and the table can now rotate 90 degrees to face out the window to be uh, like a little dining desk bar area. And it's those kind of simple little things that have taken a great floor plan and just escalated it up to the next level of severity. I'm really happy with what I see here. It's also one of the very few things that gives you any level of outside camp kitchen without bunks, which is kind of rare as hen's teeth and hard to find, but it's not flawless. There are some things too, like um, this one has no washer dryer accommodations. It, they no longer have an option for a king bed. We're gonna cover the good with the bad as we go. And if you appreciate that kind of stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let's get started. This one's, this one's kind of funny because uh, they've gone to, again, the one decor, but what they did is they kind of took bits and pieces of the old, what was called craftsman decor and the farmhouse decor and sort of spliced them together, kind of Franken-styled them a little bit. And depending on where you look at the RV, parts of it look a little darker, parts of it look a little lighter. And this right here, I am super excited to see. It doesn't take much. But just the, the, the table that you've seen, the freestanding table and chairs that brackets against the wall that's existed for years. What's funny is old RV tech is finally being introduced or rather reintroduced back into modern RV design. Uh, pivoting tables, spinning tables like that, that used to be such a common thing. Montana practically made a career out of it for a, a large number of years actually. And uh, you're going to start seeing more and more brands do that. Like I think Cougar's doing something like that, uh, where it allows the table to kind of function a little bit as a desk. Now, obviously in this floor plan, a lot of your windows are facing over on the, uh, the driver's side of the RV, not necessarily on your camp side of the rig. So uh, other floor plans though, that will become, I think, super handy. Or, I don't know, is it really useful to have kind of a desk function in its current arrangement. I don't see any problems with it. I just wonder if it might be more effective somewhere else. I'm not sure. Uh, something you're still not seeing from Jayco, though, it's not a bad thing. And that's the air conditioner. Because uh, that's a whisper ducted air, and it is significantly quieter than a lot of other things that I've heard out there. Um, I have yet to be able to get, like... I'd love to get like an Eagle, a Cougar, a Reflection, uh, an Avenue, like all these companies side by side who all somehow claim they have the quietest air conditioner with the most airflow. And I'd love to do a side by side test. I just, I don't typically have all of those RVs side by side available to do that. But maybe one of these days I'll figure out how to do it. I don't know. In the meantime, um, let me slide over here to the theater seating where you've got those handy little swivel stands. Uh, because one of the things you might notice they did not mount the TV pie high to the sky, so it is directly across from you. No funky camera magic. I'm not like holding it at weird angles. This is uh, on the same level of uh, plane as my head. Um, and again, you know, you can see the it's just above the fireplace, and right above the fireplace, actually more directly between the fireplace and TV is that new JBL sound uh, bar. They are uh, up in their game as this has graduated from HT to Big Bird Eagle. They have also improved the uh, audio system quality, which is very nice. Now, the problem is I don't use fancy audio equipment that is capable of really 
properly demonstrating that on camera for you. So that's one of those things that um, if you get a chance to visit uh, an RV dealership, you can kind of try that on for size. Now you may have noticed there was that floating kind of ottoman right in front of the rear hide -a bed sofa on this thing. That actually goes with the dining table chairs. It's what I call a Franken table. And I'll show you some demos of that uh, in just a few minutes here, actually very shortly now that I think about it. And um, I, I like it in front of the hide -a bed sofa though, but nothing says you have to put it there. And kind of on that same note, nothing says you have to use the table in the current arrangement the way that I have it. As a matter of fact, that's one of the things I think is probably most flexible. Like in an RV, I'm happy when something has two functions. And if it has three, wow. This dining table and floating bench and the fact that it still includes the four fold, or the, pardon me, the two fold away guest chairs. So you can actually have four chairs and the bench still floating around. That's all factory standard on these. That's Eagle doing Eagle things. That is a level above what I've seen any other manufacturer do. Because some people don't like the half booth, half table. You can do whatever you want with this. Now that TV, by the way, it can pivot. So if you want to kind of cheat half the angle toward the sofa and like lounge on the sofa and watch TV, you can do that here. Um, the kitchen is it looks a little compact. It doesn't have the most prep space. I tell you, uh, a flip-up extension or two on uh, either side or both sides of that uh, kitchen island would really go a long way to expanding this, the uh, the prep space here. Are you listening, Jayco? Anyway, uh, never mind all that. That whole wall that, uh, that we're facing here, that is just a gigantic amount of storage. But the big cabinet on the bottom... Uh, the bottom right section, that actually, the the shelf in that can fold up and get out the way, and that can be a like a coat hanging area if you want it, which is also really handy considering you got the little, um, you know, shoe garage storage right there. Um, I've actually had a small dog years past that would have loved that little space. Something else you uh, can't really see from just this video is they got rid of the bulldog clips that hold the, the doors and, and things shut. They're all mag uh, magnet now, basically. Magnetic, that's the word I'm looking for. Very, very tired. Now, upgrading from Eagle HT to full Eagle, they have maintained the BM Pro system. And you're like, what do you mean? This floor plan always had it. Yes, it did. But the new Eagle HTs do not have this thing. That's a little bit of a cost-saving measure. Now, they haven't really changed the floor plan. They haven't changed the layout of the bed, the bath, or anything like that. But obviously, as you see right here, they have uh, started including that full windshield in the, the front end of this thing in that north-south bed area. And it just gives it I don't know. I really like it. It gives it a very, very cool look in my two cents. Now, these are 50 amp, uh, so they are second air uh, prepped. And as you see right here, there is a second air conditioner option, which is very, well, cool. <laughs> I need to go to bed after this. Um, thankfully, it's only a four mile walk through this complex to get back to my room. No big deal, you know. Household and USB outlets on both sides of the beds, a nice little touch right there. And look just above the bed. This is interesting to me. They had a little space and they just put like a little pocket in there. Now I don't see any sort of outlets or anything. A set of USB plugs in there, ooh. Like if they, what do you think about this? If they move the USB plugs off the side stands and put them in that little cavity there for phone charging, would that be better or worse or just a break even? Cause all you're doing is exchanging things. I don't know, leave me a note. Let me know. Um, in the meantime, let's look at the storage here uh, in the bedroom. Now, uh, the bed has full, easy lift space. And that's also exactly where you're probably going to put those um, uh, chairs, you know, that we looked at earlier. The uh, uh, side stands, they added extra dresser space that they didn't have before as well. And then over in the closet, you can kind of see how the, the upper deck slide is it's half in the bathroom, half in the bedroom. Well, not quite half, but you get the idea. It goes between. So this is a dual entry bed and bath. Um, but, you know, over there, that's all your hanging closet space. And then as we slide back here, that is actually going to be uh, like your, your bathroom linen storage. Giving you a little peek at that, by the way, just so you can kind of see things. One of my only personal things I'd like to see tweaked on this is get rid of the shelf under either the left or right side of the sink. I don't care which. And give me a spot for a wastebasket. That kind of thing is just so ultra handy. 
Uh, again, the floor plan hasn't really changed, so this has maintained that radius shower right there. Um, the headroom in this is just enough for a guy like me if I suddenly magically turn into Bobcat Goldthwait. <laughs> anyway, you know he doesn't actually talk like that, uh, like his Police Academy character. He's actually a very intelligent um, and shockingly well-spoken uh, like screenwriter. He does a lot of things. But you know what? Uh, I, I would sit here and think, you folks probably didn't tune into this video for Bobcat Goldthwait trivia, but there's that one guy. He's been waiting. And today was the day. <laughs> now back it up a little bit. I've actually, I'm leaning backwards with my head up in the windshield area in case my voice echoes funny. There is a blackout privacy roller shade that you can pull down up here just in case you're curious. I just wanted you to get to see you do have TV hookups here in the bedroom. And I love this extra large campsite overlook window that we have right here, which of course also has that same kind of privacy shade. One of the other cool things about this one is uh, because the bed is in the north-south configuration, it's not in a slide, there's zero question about it. The bed is fully functional with the slide closed because it isn't unsupported in any way. This is what I'm talking about right here. With that slide closed, the bed doesn't have to move. Oh, that reminds me. You might notice how the mattress has shifted over a little bit and there's like a six inch gap over there. They no longer have a king bed option but you can now slot in what's called an Olympic queen, which is a real thing. A lot of people don't seem to believe me. It's definitely less common, no question about that. But it's six inches wider. So the thing is, uh, the, the quote, king beds and RVs typically are not actually king beds anyway. Um, and yes, obviously 60 inches or 66 inches wide on an Olympic queen is less than 70 inches wide on an RV king. But the difference here is you can actually easily source uh, mattresses and bedding for it, whether it's just Amazon or, or whatever, you know. Um, now, Walmart's probably not going to have like Olympic Queen stuff, but again, it's you can find those things elsewhere. So if you do want to get a little bit bigger bed, you can. Bathroom is travel accessible. Trick with this RV though. The goal behind this one is to give you opposing slides in an island in as short of a length possible. And as a result, the kitchen just flat is not accessible in transit. Although... It actually kind of is. And you're like, wait a minute, what now? I'll explain. So here's the thing. I've opened only the kitchen slide. And the reason I've done that is to demonstrate that if you can get in to access the bathroom and the bedroom, then uh, you can get in to access the kitchen. And here's why I say that. The slide doesn't even stick out as far as the entry handle. The slide doesn't even stick out as far as the steps. So. I, I'm not going to give it, you know, uh, a, a perfect road mode score. It still requires you doing a thing, but it is totally reasonable and possible, I think. And in terms of getting this one down the road, or as I like to call it, Weird Al yanking it, um, my general recommendation, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say three quarter. Uh, the, uh, the overall size, the GVW, and especially more specifically the hitch weight, to me just knocks half tons out of contention on this one and there might be theoretically i i think you might be able to custom order uh uh f-150 with like max crazy payload nearing like three thousand pounds and then theoretically there is a vehicle that could do it that's called a half ton generally speaking though half tons are not going to be suited for this thing you're going to want three quarter ton and up now uh tankless on demand water heater right there and you see the uh the docking center it, it looks really sharp to me kind of a little natural wood toned out what i haven't checked is okay so it does feel like it's a wood product wood product around a water docking station Gives me a little bit of the heebie-jeebies, but maybe it's an okay thing. Not sure. This is a single-headed sewer monster with only one sewer outlet. Underbelly is enclosed, forced air heated, and if I get you down here low enough, you see the stinky slinky sewer tube, so you don't got to worry about your black tank stuff kind of mixing around with everything else. Uh, this is a uh, automatic leveling system, so you just, it's like scrubbing bubbles. It does the work so you don't have to, um, basically. <laughs> All slide on and prepped and ready. And again, one of the major um, exterior visual things is like the whole cosmetic package, but uh, you know, you can kind of see in there that is a front windshield. Now it is 
heavily, heavily tinted. Actually, the windshield I've noticed carries more tint than uh, any of the other windows that I've seen on the RV. That being said, um, generally, theoretically, yes, somebody could peek in there, but unless your neighbor's a giraffe, they're probably not gonna be able to see a lane in bed. And of course, there's always the shade that you could pull over there. Now, this one um, does not have the ability to have a second awning on it due to the presence of that little mini camp kitchenette. Uh, it's too close to the edge of the slide. There's nowhere to mount an additional awning arm. So that's kind of one of those push-pull, you know, get you give and you get kind of things out of this one. The uh, docking, jeez, I, I am very, very fatigued, sorry. Um, and, and I'm doing this to myself. Nobody says I have to work crazy stupid late like this. I just, there's, con there's you know, campers here and they need recording it's just what i do so uh the the problem is i end up getting uh tired and slap happy and kind of like this my dialogue goes way way off the rails um look above the entry door you see what looks like a backup camera mount um and that's uh, truly exactly what it is except when it's over the door you can use it like uh, almost like a security monitor so uh if you're laying in bed somebody knocks on your door or no matter where you have that monitor if somebody knocks on the door you don't even need to like crack the window open to check out who's there you can see if it's bob or carol or ted or alice you know all very handy things um the little mini kitchenette here overall it's fairly basic because they moved some stuff out of it and uh the display's been partially taken down it looks like here but um a griddle will be included with this along with one of those little drop-in kind of sink situations where it's sort of just a little hand wash basin not a full true like you know draining sink that's plumbed into uh, one of the holding tanks so kind of keep that in mind now in the back over here you got the 250 pound rated ladder to get you up to that plywood magnum truss roof jaco's roofing if you weren't aware rated to hold more weight per square foot than just about anything else in the marketplace I say just about because maybe theoretically there's something that is more capable. I've, I've never actually seen it, but I, I don't claim to know every single thing about every RV in the industry. Um, under the rear wall, you do have what they call their um, towing package, 3,000 pound towing hitch standard on this. And doesn't that kind of look like one giant window in the slide there? That's one of those visual elements that uh, North Point started doing last year that a lot of other manufacturers have since kind of uh, started picking up. And in our floor plan and a flash flyby footage, you also saw up top a uh, solar panel. That is now standard. What is called the Overlander One solar package, now standard on these. Um, you can take it further as well if you're looking for a little more uh, like uh, extra wattage if you're looking for inverters there's some other really fun solar expanding things that frankly I should probably make a totally separate video on that kind of stuff so let me know what you think you know is it uh, moving on up or is it just to the east side uh, you you folks let me know uh, what the Jeffersons might think on this one and in the meantime what I'm gonna do is leave you some links in the video description to check for pricing and availability and because uh, naturally that really kind of helps you decide whether this is or is not uh, a good option for you and we don't do hidden fee pricing it's all just put right up there um, and you know basically folks when you're ready we're ready uh, I've tried to give you a generalized idea here but don't hesitate to contact our local store members at our uh, our team members at our stores it is you, you can't tell because we're inside right now it is very late this display closed hours ago and I'm just like running on zombie autopilot at this point but we're gonna keep on rolling until next time take care stay safe have fun and happy camping everyone mm -hmm.